Thank you for joining me for part two of our awesome Camino adventure. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I'm gonna have to recommend that you check it out because this won't make as much sense unless you've seen it. But to catch us up from where that video left off, the sun had just set on an excellent day two and we we're preparing for our longest day yet, day three. Let's see what happens. feet are a little bit achy so I decided to take a rest and chat with you guys but now we're about an hour and a half into the hike thus far overall it's been a pretty chill morning we're just hiking on a road I think we're gonna be hiking on the road all day but it's not too bad considering that we're flanked by beautiful grazing pastures and as you could definitely tell from the morning you saw that we had to pass through a bunch of cows that had gotten out I was a little sketchy most of them were really nice but a couple of them kind of walked at you if you know what I mean and then of course who could forget the castles that we got to see I really like the big castle that I visited last night we went to go see that again flew the drone around it and then obviously there was the castle in the sheep pasture that was super cool all right but it's probably about time i get the pack back on and continue down this road i'll update you as things happen but i don't expect today to be too eventful Yesterday's flat road section was definitely a warm up for today, as we've got a full 13 kilometers of flat road ahead. It's not too bad with good company or a podcast, and the farms that flank the road left and right are really pretty. We even stopped for a while to watch a sheep being born, so that was pretty neat. It's also a really fun place to mess around with the drone. Just don't look at it for too long, or the absolute monotony of this section will sink in. And that kind of existential dread is really bad for morale. Almost as bad as the fact that the road is much harder on the feet than the dirt we've been walking on. So foot fatigue is setting in way harder and faster for sure. After the flat road section, we hit a large highway interchange, complete with a hotel, restaurant, and shop. This leads to a bizarre feeling though, not just because we've left wilderness for the first time, but also because today is our longest day yet. In previous days, the 13 kilometer mark would mean that we're finished. And as we sit at the station for a breather, I deeply feel that it should be over, but it's just not. Stopping here for a little longer than we should, we eat a big lunch, drinking cold refrigerated drinks for the first First time in a little while and sitting in a real chair. How lovely is that? This was a big boost to morale, but I don't know if it will be enough to get us through the last nine kilometers between us and Monasterio. This last section will be brutal as it includes the longest and steepest climb of the whole trip next to a freeway, no less. So sans all that natural beauty, yeah? With so much ahead of us, I doubt we're going to be making it into the hotel before sunset. The only upside is that the trail is at least now soft dirt under my now incredibly sore feet. I'll just have to keep focusing on that to stay sane. If I'm sounding a little harsh to you, no, I'd prefer to convey the realities of these long distance walks. Too many hikers pretend the journey is all rainbows and that just is never the case, is it? In any multi-day walk, there will always be a worse day as surely as there'll be a best. So just keep that in mind and remember that you're out here to experience it all, not just what's great. At least and that's what I keep telling myself anyway. Now let's get going as we don't have any time to spare.
So we just exited the city limits of Monasterio and I know I really didn't take a lot of footage in there and I promised you that I would update you, but I just couldn't. <laughs> By the time I was doing the drone shots kind of revealing the town, oh, like a cold wind was blowing through and it was getting kind of shitty. So we decided to just push on to the hostel, drop our stuff off, maybe take a warm shower and whatnot, but no, couldn't do that either because I'm not allowed nice things. The water was running completely cold in the hostel and the heating was broken. So I just cuddled up under a blanket all dirty and gross for a while. <laughs> Spirits were a little bit low last night. Though, as you can tell, today and yesterday has been very different than the first two days where they were very warm. I think that's because the weather at this particular time of year, late February, can be a little bit variable. I also thought this would be a perfect lead-in for the next logistical topic, the weather. If you're lucky, you can have those lovely warm summer days that we were having. In fact, that's what the weather forecast said we were going to have the entire week. However, now we're gonna be lucky if we hit 63 degrees or something like that. So as you can tell, it's the proper cold front has dropped through and the clouds behind me well I guess they're all gone now but when we started walking it was a little bit gloomy and I was a little bit worried of rain so the weather has definitely changed pretty quickly on us I think that's why most people then choose to opt for more of a March and April but then you do have to be careful with that because it could get really hot but regardless everyone agrees never do the Via de la Plata in the summer that would be hell yeah, no. you'd get heat stroke but I might suggest if you do come at this time, bringing a lightweight, collapsible, like inflatably puffer jacket like she has. We'll do some shots of it later. I have one at home and I considered bringing it, but I didn't. And I'm shivering a little bit all for it. Hopefully though, with the sun on our back today, it'll be okay. And tomorrow looks like it's gonna be another hot one. It's just oddly variable and a little difficult to pack for. Let's get back on the trail because I've got a lot of miles to walk today. With the sun strengthening as the morning marches on, we notice the clouds breaking behind us, revealing a beautiful blue sky. Today's hike de Fuente is already starting to pick up from yesterday's gloom. And like yesterday, we should have a good break at some point along the way, as one of my maps mentions a town two thirds along the trail. For now though, as we followed the path in this picturesque landscape, our tranquility was snapped by the mighty roar of fighter jets maneuvering above. And as quickly as our own little air show appeared, it disappeared, leaving a trail of noise in their wake. After that fun little interlude, we continued down the trail, becoming skeptical again as the trail turned back to road that reminded me a lot of yesterday's less than ideal experiences. However, my skepticism was put to bed as the road offered far more tranquility, flanked by excellent farmland and orchards. You know the drill. We stopped here for a moment by the side of the road to do some blister first aid, as they're essentially guaranteed on a journey like this. But with an adequate first aid kit, you can take care of that no problem, as we did. I'll spare you the visuals though. You don't need to see that. Continuing on, it suddenly occurred to me that we were steadily climbing. Before we knew it, we passed through a gate and were treated to a new trail, winding along a high ridge line, giving us a complete view, surveying a totally new environment of endless fields and towns as far reaching as the horizon itself. Quickly though, our gaze turned towards the dirt as we noticed a truly uncountable number of caterpillars crossing the road. This added an extra challenge to our walking as we did our best not to crush them. That was pretty hard and it slowed us down quite a lot. After Caterpillar Road, we came into a wonderful lush pasture sitting on a sort of sky meadow above the lower land surrounding us. We settled here and had essentially the best lunch of the trip, even cracking open a commemorative bottle of trail wine to mark the occasion. From this wonderful spot, the last half of today's hike was easily mapped out ahead of us. So clear was this path that we could follow it through the landscape all the way to Fuente itself. Really beautiful stuff. With what was ahead of us now made clear, let's keep pushing on through to that two thirds town. Now bear with me if it's a little windy. I'm on an open plain, as you can see, so there's very little shelter and this is the best, <laughs> the best I'm gonna be able to do for you. Now, it turns out I'm a bit of an idiot. And earlier this morning and all throughout the day, I've been talking about going to this like town two thirds of the way there and doing a bit of a rest. And I don't know if it was just like wishful thinking or I was lying to myself, I have no idea, but the map marker that I've been convinced was a town was just a map marker for a river. So there's nothing here. 
as you can see as plain as I can, there's nothing here. And I felt like I really needed that two thirds break this morning. It really like got me through the beginning of the hike. Like I was really like, ah, oh, you know, my feet kind of hurt and I'm feeling a little bummed out. But you know, two thirds of the way there, I'll take a big rest before finishing it up. Cause you know, that final hurdle every day so far has been, you know, a little bit of a push, but I'm all right. I'm more than excited to, to finish off the hike today and be just really happy and just walking through all these fields. And yeah, no, I feel great. One more thing that's kind of interesting is that all the other days, right? The main town has been completely obfuscated either by a big hill in its way or it being at the top of that really big hill. Uh, but today I'm already higher than the town. So it's just a, it's a slow meandering walk down and I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, this is probably gonna be the end of the update for me on the hiking because I doubt anything interesting is gonna really happen from here to there, but I'm gonna really enjoy it. So uh, yeah, I'll see you later today. With the two thirds river now behind us, we quickly realized that our magnificent lunch spot had also deceived us. You see, emboldened through the sight of our destination, we were fooled into believing we were much closer than we were. From that height, witnessing the fields, barren of trees or any kind of markings, we just couldn't accurately intuit the distance. So as we strolled along the path, with all the fun we were having in this excellent landscape, flying the drone and in general, just taking it easy, our pace had slowed to a crawl. And as the path descended, we noticed that what we had once thought was flat from on high was actually starting to roll out into long sweeping hills. This is when it dawned on us that despite our best efforts today, we wouldn't be arriving to our hostel until well past sunset, completely exhausted no less. This really felt like a bad omen because tomorrow, our final day, was going to be just as long and just as hilly. And if we repeat today's performance, as enjoyable as it was, we're not gonna be arriving in Zafra early enough to actually experience and explore it, which would be a real shame. So as we walked through the fields, now lit with the soft yellows of the golden hour, when we finally did arrive to Fuente, the sky had turned a vivid purple. No time to sit around. We need to execute our new grand plan. So let me fill you in. We're gonna need to eat an extra hearty meal tonight, but with no dilly-dallying as we need to go to sleep as soon as possible. You see, on the way to Zafra from here, there are gonna be two towns along the way. The first one only being about seven kilometers away. So we plan on waking at dawn, skipping any food here and walking as fast as we can to have breakfast in that in-between town. That should give us a real head start. From there, we're gonna rest up, though hopefully not for too long, before pushing as hard as we can to that second town with very few stops. This town, though quite a distance away, is actually only four kilometers from Zafra proper. So if we can get there in a reasonable time, then we're gonna be in good shape to truly explore and see Zafra. But it's gonna be tough. So let's break for now and I'll see you on the trail. Me and Camille had spoken at length about this being a two-part series. Never once did we think it was gonna need a third video, but as we put it together on the timeline, it was just getting too long and we hadn't even hit the conclusion yet. So if you do wanna stick around and watch that fifth and final day, plus our awesome wrap up, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in a couple days.